Well, I don't know if past everybody's deadline tonight, probably. If you wrote, you could write that game hopefully in the second half because that was a great effort. I thought, uh, you know, the way we defended, the way we rebounded in that second half, uh, and even in the first half, we didn't rebound the ball exceptionally well. We were up one uh, rebounding margin at halftime, and we ended up out rebounding by 15 for the game. So we were plus 14 in the second half. I thought Wesley's, Wesley Gordon's offensive rebounding combined with Josh Scott's defensive rebounding was the difference in the game. Wesley got us extra possessions, and, and uh, uh, our defensive effort pretty much the whole night was pretty good. Gary Payton obviously is a special player. I mean, he has 26 and 15, you know, three steals. I mean, he's, uh, he's the real deal. And I thought our guys did a good job of making him work for everything. We, we broke down a few times, but for the most part, I was really pleased with our defensive effort. Coach, you always say it's not about who starts, it's about who finishes. Thomas Akazili plays the last four for you tonight. Yeah, he, he was really guarding. You know, Thomas was, was uh, he's a tenacious defender. Uh, I thought he was playing well. His assist to turnover ratio, you look at in league play, is as good as anybody on our team, the best. Um, so he's really just, he just kind of, it's just one of those game time things. Again, you, you, you just have a feel, and some other guys didn't have their best nights. Um, so, again, uh, you know, X Dalton came out in the second half. He kind of tweaked his foot or his ankle and wasn't sure how, uh, you know, how his health was in terms of being able to cut off that thing. And he was guarding Gary Payton, and, you know, uh, that's a tall task. But I thought our bigs did a good job switching off of uh, Payton and making him make tough shots. And, uh, but, yeah, Thomas finished the game because he's playing extremely well right now. And, you know, and we talked about playing him and Dom together, and they, they played down the stretch. We wanted two ball handlers in the game. We knew they were going to press us. They went to that 1-3-1 one, one zone. We wanted those guys out top so, you know, we could uh, hopefully get the ball on the baseline and make some plays. Did you like how that two-guard lineup played uh, compared to the one yeah, yeah. I mean, it was good tonight, and you know, it was good. We could do it defensively based on the personnel, and uh, you know, the, the there are certain teams it's going to be tough to play play it because of the the size thing. But no, I'm I'm fine with the two guard lineup, and again, they're all guards. It's just you know, uh, Fletch and Josh Fortune and and uh, George are a little taller. But uh, look, those six perimeter players. The bottom line is they're all going to have to play. And certain nights they're going to play better than others, and it's going to be up to us as coaches to decide who, night in and night out, needs to get those minutes, especially in the second half. And uh, the more consistent the guys play, um, the more predictable it will be. The more inconsistent guys play, the less predictable it can be. It will be. And uh, you know, I just have to make those decisions. But we got six very capable players. But with that being said, 18 turnovers. And uh, I'm not a big uh, math guy, but uh, you know, 14 of the 18 came from our perimeter players. So post guys aren't the turnover. Well, those those six guys got to take better care of the basketball. Coach, I've last couple of weeks are encouraged about the way the team finished uh, you know, late in this game. And is it the sort of thing that can build on it happens? We never lost confidence. You know, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot of games. There's already been a lot of games in college basketball that come down to the last possession. You know, Arizona, they were one and two. They lost two games on the road, one by an unbelievable shot by Bryce Alford and one in quadruple overtime. It's like they're that, they're that close from being three and oh to one and two. It's the way this league is. So it's not a – look, we didn't, we didn't finish the Utah game. We didn't win the Utah game. It's not because – of any magical thing. It's just we didn't win the game. We won tonight. I mean, it's just, I don't, you know, trends are, are one thing. It's about what do you got to do to win the next game. And, yeah, so if we can gain confidence from tonight, that's great. If, but, you know, Oregon on Sunday, it's going to be a dog fight. I can promise you. Those guys are good. But, you know, you usually say you don't remember all these things, but was that one of the best games you've seen from Wesley Gordon at this time here? I thought rebounding wise it was. Yeah, I still think I still think Wesley can finish better than he finished. But you know he's three for six. Again, we'll take that fifty percent. And uh, but when he gets seven offensive rebounds, yeah, he's a. Uh, and he and Josh defensively are so good and so underrated. Um, you know, they had nine block shots between them. Uh, but yeah, Wesley's Wesley's that kind of player. He can, again, one of the things we talked about. 
after the Utah game to our players is what do you do as a basketball player on this basketball team to help the team win that does not involve scoring? And when I think about a guy on our team that does that and is the epitome of that, it's Wes Gordon. And now, do we want Wes to score? Absolutely. When he has, you know, 12 points and 14 rebounds, it really makes us much, much better. But he, the thing about Wes, he doesn't have to score to have a positive impact on the game. And that's what I love about him. And that's what makes him such a good player and such a valuable player to this team. We've got some other guys, when they're not scoring, they're not, they're not doing a lot to help our team. They're not rebounding. They're not defending. They're not taking charges. They're, you know, we've they got to figure that out. Coach, I know you worked a lot this week on your, your transition offense. Uh, mm -hmm. So a handful like credit of eight fast break points, but it seemed like it was a bigger difference. We got out. We got out and ran better, I thought, yeah. And, and again, we got a lot of stops. And now we have got to become a better finishing team in transition. We had opportunities to finish where we didn't finish. And that's what we have to get better at. More fast break drills, more film watching. Again, simple, quick, easy decisions on the fast break. Um, we got to do a better job of that. But I thought our transition game was better offensively in terms of putting pressure on them. And uh, you know, we we got to the foul line tonight. Really, is hard for me as a coach to understand. Twenty again, non-conference play, we're averaging 26 free throw attempts a game. Going into tonight's game in conference play, we're averaging 14. Tonight we shoot 27. Against Utah we shot four. So every game is going to be a different game when it comes to that whistle, and we got to figure it out. And tonight we figured it out. We finished better. I thought Josh and Wes finished better in the in the paint. Obviously, you know, being 11 for 17 between the two of them. Um, if they can continue to finish like that and get to the foul line, we're, we're going to be pretty good. Talk about doing the same thing in the last six minutes. Yeah, I thought being aggressive with about two and a half minutes to go with a, I think we were up 12 or so. That's when it's okay. Now it's time and score. Now we need to use the clock, use the, make sure we use the 30 second shot clock and try to score in the last, you know, five to seven seconds of that. But up until that two and a half minute mark, I wanted to continue to push, you know, be aggressive, don't get tentative. Uh, and I thought our guys did a good job of that. Students were awesome. I mean, at the beginning I was a little worried, but man, I came out at halftime and the thing was pretty full. I mean, that was it was great. And hopefully those students had a good enough time where they're going to want to come back on Sunday. And, you know, look, we've got uh, two, two of our nine games are behind us. We have seven conference home games left. And if we can have a student section like that, bring an energy. And look, the 9 o'clock start, I get it with our community. You know, it wasn't, it was probably our weakest crowd of the year in terms of our general public non-students but look I'm not I'm not I'm not blaming anybody for that it's nine o'clock you know, a couple of my kids didn't come to the game because they got school tomorrow so I'm, I'm I, I totally get that um, and I know they'll be back and we need them on Sunday I know the Broncos are playing but you know there's there's uh, iPads now and you can watch the dang game and you're seated at the arena if you want to we'll give updates on the scores we'll have watch parties in the Chips Corral and the, the beer garden outside of Coors. So you can come and check out the Broncos and, and cheer on the Buffs on Sunday and kind of get a two-for-one deal. So thank you.